Hi, I'm going to show you how to do a very common titration. This when you have a strong base with a weak acid and you're trying to determine the molarity of the acid. So let me show you the setup. Uh, we're going to have an Erlenmeyer flask. Okay, so this is my Erlenmeyer flask with a burette. Um, now, first thing that you want to do is clean your burette. You'll clean it with hot soapy water, rinse it really good with distilled water, and then you'll take five to 10 mils of your base the sodium hydroxide right there, um, and you'll, it's called washing it. You'll pour it into the burette and then you swirl the um, burette like this and pour out the sodium hydroxide into a waste container. Um, the goal is for the sodium hydroxide to touch every bit of surface area inside that burette. So the only thing inside of there is sodium hydroxide. Um, the other thing that you want to do is determine the indicator that you're going to use. You'll have a pretty good idea. Um, you can uh, just do um, the three-step process, and if you don't know how to do that calculation, watch my, um, my video under the playlist Acid Base that says three-step. It's determining the pH at the equivalence point, okay? So you'll have a pretty good idea at where the um, pH changes. So what you do is you look at an indicator table and find an indicator that changes color within that pH range. Um, for what we're doing, I'm gonna have my students do pineapple juice um, and that citric acid, that pH is going to change the equivalence point, um, is going to be pretty close to an eight. So I have my students use phenolphthalein. Um, it goes from a clear color to really pretty pink. Um, after you've determined your indicator, and I have a video on this, if that's confusing, watch my video on how to determine an indicator, and then you need to standardize the base. Now, sometimes it's standardized, sometimes it's not. If you have to standardize the base, I have my students do this as a separate lab. If you have to standardize the base, watch my video under the playlist labs that says base standardization, and um, I'll, I'll give you all the steps how to do that. It's a whole nother uh, process. Okay, most of the time though, you'll just be given the sodium hydroxide standardized. Okay, um, so we're going to have sodium hydroxide in the burette, that's called the titrant. Um, the analyte was being titrated. For my students, we're going to use different juices. And in this example, I'll say that it's pineapple juice. I'm wearing safety glasses, but I'll be honest you guys, this is just all water. I'm just trying to demonstrate what you're going to do. Um, so you're going to fill up your burette. I recommend um, go pretty close to the top, um, kind of close to that one. Be careful reading burette. It feels kind of anti-intuitive. Let me show you how I read this. Um, so I actually start at zero and I go, okay, this is gonna be one, two, three, four. You're literally, literally reading the number where the meniscus hits. So I'm going 20, 21, 22, okay, I'm at 28. And then it goes by the tenths place. Um, so then I go 28.1 and I look close and the meniscus is exactly hitting 28.1. Now, you'll recall when we're doing significant figures, you always write down what you know with certainty plus one guess. Well, with certainty, we can go to the tenths place, which means I have to make a guess at the hundredths place. To me, it looks like that meniscus is dead on that line, the point one. So my guess is zero. Now, if it was a little bit lower, if it was um, 28, then 28.1 and a hair lower, then I might guess like 28.15. The 0 0.05 would have been my guess, but I think it's it's dead on. Okay, and then inside the Erlenmeyer flask. So I have my students, we use graduated cylinders. You might be using a graduated pipette. Um, measure out their 10 mils of the pineapple juice and they pour this in. I will also have my students wash this, that they're going to, well, I wanna make sure we get all that pineapple juice out. So they'll wash this with distilled water. Um, and then they'll pour that in. Now, some of you might be going, no, wait, wait, Mrs. Love, you just added 10 mils and added extra water to it. Um, now, by adding water to it, I changed the concentration, but do you know what? For a titration, I don't care. All I care about is the number of moles of acid. I put 10 moles of acid in here, and, or excuse me, I put 10 mils of the pineapple juice, and there's a fixed amount of acid. By adding distilled water, I didn't change the moles of the acid. The moles of the acid change this, stay the same. The concentration changed, but the moles of the acid stay the same. And what I'm interested in is determining the moles of acid inside of here. So to make this a little bit easier to do the titration, I have my students add 50 to 100 mils. It just helps you see the phenolphthalein change a little bit better. Okay, so we, we brought this to a volume of about 50 mils. Um, 
totally fine. I still have the same number of moles of acid inside of there. So it's okay to add distilled water to my analyte because I'm focusing on moles. Now, let me give you a reminder why. Um, let's look at our titration curve. The titration curve, I'll pull it over here. Um, where I have the citric acid from the pineapple juice. Oops, go like that. Sorry, that wasn't super pretty. Um, we're, we're going to titrate it. And at that point right there, that's the equivalence point. That is so special. That's where the moles of the hydroxide, the base, equal the moles of the acid, okay? Um, that is where we're going to see the color change. Um, when I go drop, 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 and it goes from clear to pink, I stop right there. Um, that's this beautiful equivalence point where the moles of acid equal the moles of the base. Um, so after I've read this, um, I have my, um, my acid in here, I added a little bit of water with it so it's easier to see. I add my phenolphthalein. Cut three drops phenolphthalein, it stays clear because this is still acidic. And then I begin my titration. Now on the titration, if you haven't done titrations before, get a little junk beaker, take 30 seconds and practice. This is very tactile. You want to get to the point where you can do this drop by drop, one drop at a time, or control it. I'm going drop, 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 stop it um, at one, any point that I want. So you want to get that dexterity of the titration. It's very, like I said, hands-on tactile. Okay, so let's say I go drop, 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 drop. Um, I'll start seeing flashes of pink, so I'll stop, swirl it, add a drop, it flashes pink, stop, swirl it. When you add a drop, turns pink, swirl it, and it stays pink for 30 seconds, it means that you've reached the equivalence point right there, okay? So let's say that that happened at 40.9 mils. This is so cool. All we had to do was add the base until um, my analyte turned pink, stayed pink. I have all the information I need now to find molarity of the acid. You might love this math and go, really, that's it? Yes, this is all you have to do. The key is right here in that equal sign. The amount of moles that I added from this base now equals the moles inside that analyte. So cool. So let me show you this. We are going to subtract these two. Uh, 40.9 minus 28.10 is going to give me 12.8 mils. That's the volume that we added. Well, I know the concentration of molarity, which means we can find moles of hydroxide. And we know that the moles of the hydroxide equal the moles of the hydrogen because when I added that last drop, it stayed pink. Cool. Um, so we actually, in essence, also know the moles of the hydrogen. Let's do this together. So I have 0 0.100 moles per liter of hydroxide. Little reminder, one, if it's 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide, it's a 1 to 1 molar ratio. That means it's 0.1 molar hydroxide. Okay, so there's my hydroxide. I'm going to multiply it by, convert this, just divide it by 1,000, convert that into um, liters and get 0 0.01280, okay? So times by 0 0.01280 liters, liters will cancel, and that'll give me 0 0.001280 moles of hydroxide. So I know exactly how many moles of hydroxide we added into that. And I know that the moles of base equal the moles of the acid. Now, I did a little bit more advanced problem uh, titration for my students. Um, this citric acid is a triprotic acid. If I was doing something like acetic acid, it's monoprotic, um, the hydroxide would exactly equal the hydrogen. Those would be the same moles. I'd have 0.001280 moles of hydrogen. But just to spice it up a little bit, my students are going to do citric acid. And I give them that chemical formula. Citric acid loses three hydrogens, not one. It's not monoprotic, it's triprotic. So we've got to convert from moles of hydroxide to moles of hydrogen. Um, 0 0.001280 moles of hydroxide. And because citric acid is triprotic, it takes three moles of hydroxide to react with every one mole of that citric acid, which is going to give me, let's see here, it will give me 4.26, um, actually I'm going to, well, I'm going to, actually no, I'm going to keep it at 4.66, sorry, times 10 
then there's minus four moles of acid. So here's the cool thing. We found out the moles of acid inside of here. Um, now, if it had been citric acid, it would have been one mole of hydroxide reacts with one mole of acid. Um, so just look at um, how many hydrogens deprotonate, how many hydrogens do you lose uh, with the acid-base reaction. In my student's case, is going to deprotonate three hydrogens, so it's a three to one. Okay, so we found moles of acid. That's one thing that I asked my students, well, how many moles were in those 10 mils of the pineapple juice? There it is, 4.267 times 10 to the minus four. Um, now I want to know molarity. So it's the molarity of the pineapple juice. Well, I put 10 mils pineapple juice. So if we take the 4.267 times 10 to the minus four moles, just divide it by the volume of the pineapple juice. Remember we had, um, right here, there it is, a 10 mils, convert that into liters, just divide by 1,000, 0.01 liters, and that is going to give us um, 4.267 times 10 to the minus two molar, 4.04, um, 267 times uh, molar. So pretty cool, we found the molarity. The last, actually I'll ask two more questions of my students. I'll say, well, how many grams? How many grams were in those 10 mils of the pineapple juice? All you have to do is take the moles with molar mass, convert it to grams. Um, 4.267 times 10 to the minus four moles of the citric acid, citric acid. Its molar mass is 192, 192 grams for every one mole. And let me give that to you. That comes out to be 0 0.0819 grams for every 10 mils. Okay, pretty interesting um, that there is uh, 0.0819 grams of citric acid for every 10 mils of pineapple juice that we drink. Um, now in food chemistry, often they report the grams of acid per 100 mils. So then I asked my students, if we had to report this in food chemistry, what would this be for 100 mils? Well, it's just an easy ratio. 0 0.0819 grams for every 10 mils. Well, what's the math if I've got 100 mils? And it would be at um, 0.819 grams for every 100 mils. Um, and those would be the final answers that I would get from my students. Those are the four things that I ask my students to calculate. Um, so really big takeaways. If you have to find the molarity of an acid, you're going to do so great. Wash that puree, put your standardized hydroxide, sodium hydroxide in there. Um, take the initial volume, be careful reading the burette. Um, you're going to have your uh, measured volume of the acid, add some water to it, add the indicator, titrate. When it changes color and stays color, you read the final volume. That gives you the volume of the acid for those moles, excuse me, volume of the base for those moles to equal the moles of the acid. So, so cool. Um, so, little reminder, you find the mills using the molarity because you standardized it, or it was given standardized to you. Using the molarity, you find the exact moles that were delivered from the base into the analyte, into that acid. Those moles equal the acid. So you'll do the easy conversion, molar ratio conversion, depending on if it's mono product, di product, um, tri product and that gives you the moles of the acid. From there, you can find concentration divided by the original volume of the acid that you put in there. You can find grams with molar mass. You're good to go. All right, good job, you guys. This is a fun lab, enjoy it. Think through it, chew on it, make it make sense. Have a lot of fun and good luck, thanks.